So no, I should be. Playing your game. So, okay. To study these aperiodic classes is uh, much more difficult than, uh, in particular, because we have seen for the classes with periodic orbit, what we have is that the periodic orbit is uh, uh, varies continuously, and then we have a set canonically associated, so we have a clear meaning on what means to look at the continuation of the homoclinic class, or to have a, a continuation of the chain recurrent class of that periodic orbit. If you have two periodic orbits inside, maybe it's not the same for both of them, but at least the set, the class on the periodic orbit, you can follow continuously. Here you have an aperiodic class. We have no idea if there is any notion of continuation of this aperiodic class. We don't, it can disappear like that, or it can appear the same. So we, we cannot, looking at one specific aperiodic class, and say, oh yes, let's take some generic, uh, make some moves so that we will understand it better. So that is not a strategy we can do. In fact, we are already have seen some aperiodic class, in particular in uh, your course. So that is, and you say that there, are, there was odometers. Odometers, so you know, we know the dynamics, so you, it's uh, just you take, uh, uh, you, you write an infinite positive number in some bases, like base 10 or base, uh, but a variable basis, and you add one to the first, so you go to A0 plus, a, a plus one, but when you go to the number of the bases, you say no, you go to back to zero, but you put one on the next one, and so on. That is the dynamic, so it's completely understood of other methods. Is there or something else? So that is the question. So you can make a lot of aperiodic classes for non-generic dynamics. That is very easy. Uh, if you want, I, I can, or well, indeed I can show you. You take, uh, take the shift. So you have an horseshoe take in dimension three. Take some invariant plane, and in that plane, consider some horseshoe. So here you have the full shift. For the full shift, you have plenty of uh, sets with no, uh, with, which are chain recurrent or minimal or positive but not minimal and without any periodic orbit. So you can, here you have plenty of, plenty of chain recurrent set, set without, with no periodic orbit. But you put that in dimension three and you put some saddle node transversally. You make a product by zero one and you put a saddle node dynamics. And now you consider some of this set, lambda, which is some, uh, you, you choose the dynamics that you want. And out of lambda, you put some positive impulse to the right. And so you destroy all. Here you put some attractor. Here you put some repeller. So every point which is not stuck in that plane is wandering, or going from the attractor to the repeller. You choose your favorite dynamics that you want and you get an aperiodic class with a crazy dynamic inside, if you want. But that is certainly not generic. So we are not interested in that. That is a typical example done by a mathematician just for looking that you can make complicated things. That is not so interesting. So we would like to understand if there is possibility to make aperiodic classes more complicated, but not for an artificial dynamic, for something which appears in some natural way. And uh, so that is our result. So that is the final theorem. Uh, 
after four papers. So there exists a C1 open set. Uh, of this and included in this so one of M3 so that uh, for FC1 generic so let's put the concept O if you have FC1 generic in O this implies that so first, but that we already have seen, F has uncountably many a periodic classes, so that is not a surprise. But some of them, so uncountably, some uncountably many of them. are uh, positive but not minimal in fact you can uh, you can make with uh, uncountably many minimal in the same positive uh, class you can have uh, Minimal but non uniquely ergodic. Uh, you can also make uh, uniquely ergodic but not positive. And all of them, all the, the one we, we built, all uh, are expensive. And typically, adding machines, odometers, are not expensive dynamics. Uh, okay, you can think they're a little bit crazy as dynamics, but in fact, and that is not. Uh, uh, that, uh, uh, I don't know the name in English. Uh, it's, uh, it's due to the fact that you can realize all, all these properties inside that. If you look at uh, in uh, general current set in the full shift, you have all these kind of properties as you want. That is not difficult to, to get. And uh, our construction makes that it's almost like choosing a set like that in the full shift. Okay. So our proof, so now I will try to give element of the proofs. So, the proof uses three main notions or tools. I will put tools, but it's more notions. So, I will try today to define one. The first is the notion of viral property. The name has been chosen before the pandemic, sorry. <laughs> so it's not dangerous. The second will be the notion of flexible periodic point. On the third one will be uh, filtrating Markov partition.
So I will start to define today this notion. I want to try to, to make you feel what it means. Okay. Maybe I will not define it enough precisely, but if you want that it is not a metamathematic and mathematic, you need to define very precisely. So because I'm speaking on the properties, that is a property on properties. But indeed, you have to think that a property is nothing else than a set defined by some uh, sequence of symbols. So in fact, it's some set which is very wide. But you have to define it very precisely, and I cannot. Uh, it takes some time of defining correctly what is a viral property. Um, I will just give the main, uh, the main idea. So the first is that, OK, so it's a property on uh, set time continuously. So I will always, here I will all only define it on, uh, I will have PF, a periodic uh, hyperbolic saddle. And I will consider always the chain recurrent class of PF, that is some set uh, well defined, very continuous, very uh, well defined when F varies. Okay, so now I can define first. A property P on the general current class of PF is, we say, CR robust if it is an open property, that is, if the set. Uh, F, C, F, the set F, so that uh, C, P, F uh, satisfies P is CR open. So, to be robust is just that you make a perturbation and you still preserve your property. Example that we have seen yesterday, you have a diffeomorphism having a robust tangency in the stable or unstable manifold on some hyperbolic set. So uh, to, to belong the new house, if you look at uh, F on surface, so the, on PF, uh, so that it belongs uh, to so periodic, so that uh, belongs, uh, belongs to some hyperbolic set on lambda f as a robust tangency. So that is a C2 robust property. So, so now I will consider two properties. P and Q. Two properties on uh, the chain recurrent class for P, P, F, P, F, P, P, 
So uh, I will define uh, so a, new no a new notion, which is, uh, I'm, my English is bad, so I don't know very well how to put a name. So let's say that uh, P is uh, CR uh, expelling or uh, ejecting or kicking out property for Q if each time you have so you assume that you have F on the class C of PF which satisfies P Then, for any neighborhood, so let's say CR neighborhood, so it has been CR, yes, for any CR neighborhood. Hello. F for any uh, U, uh, V neighborhood neighborhood of the class of PF. So this neighborhood I can take filtrating that help I can do because uh, the, uh, the filtrating neighborhood has a basis on neighborhood, so I will put I will have here filtrating, but that is for free. You cannot put if you don't want. So for any of that, there exists a G. Oh, I forget to put. Do I need that here? P and Q are robust. So that is important, that's the first thing that I need. And then there exists a G in, uh, my, so that is a very small perturbation on F. It belongs to a small neighborhood of F. Uh, so that there exists Q, uh, G, hyperbolic point. Periodic point. I need that QG belong to V, and that QG do not belong to the generic one class of PG, and that the class of Q satisfies. So let me, uh, so I guess that you have some difficulty for uh, imagine, uh, for uh, understanding correctly what it means, but it's not so hard. So what is said here is that, okay, I have two robust properties, okay, and I take a diffeomorphism having my property P on the class. So I have this class here. Okay, that is my PF. And I choose a very small filtrating neighborhood of it. Okay, so it has been very, very small. I choose an epsilon, uh, uh, an epsilon perturbation, uh, uh, I allow me a very small perturbation. And I will take a, diff a new diffeomorphism. So uh, my, my point here is varying continuously. I have here some PG. But this point, uh, there, there is another point, Q, QG, which do not belong to the class of this one. 
But when you have two points in different classes, you have a filtration which separates them. So you can have here another filtrating neighborhood which separates these two points. On this one, as a class, so this one continues to this class satisfies P, but this one satisfies Q. As it is robust, the situation will continue sometimes when you make perturbation. It will resist to some perturbation. So we have already seen exactly this situation. Once again, in the neurons domain, if you have your robust frequency, between stable or unstable of some hyperbolic set. Okay, so that is a robust property for my point here, PS. We know we have tangency, and we know that this tangency allows me to make some open set which will be attracting. So that is for G, not for F. You make a perturbation having an attractive set on here, you will have a fixed point, an uh, attacking fixed point. So that would be Q to, to create a new sink. And P is to have this robust tangency. What is the consequence of uh, being an expelling or ejecting, or I don't know the correct name in English? Uh, is that so in this neighborhood? So generically, say R generic G in uh, O, we have infinitely many. Many distinct classes in V satisfying Q. Why is that? Because as the, 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 the property P is robust after making the first perturbation, creating the new class which has the property Q, your class still has the property P. So you can make an arbitrarily small perturbation, creating a new class satisfying Q. And you can continue like that. So that is the first new house phenomena which says that in that situation, generic diffeomorphism have infinitely many things. But that you can do with anything which is robust. If you have some process from some class with some property to eject the other class with the other property. Okay? And, okay. Let uh, go to the... That's okay for this uh, notion? Okay. So now I can state the notion of viralness. Maybe uh, emitting property would be another word. Sorry? Like emitting would be another word you could use. Uh, I, how do you spell that? Uh, e M I T T I M U. Because is Q it? is like an emission from P, and it's like being produced by. <laughs> no, I was just suggesting maybe. Okay. Uh, but but this is kind of what you mean, right? So P, if you have P, then it kind of produces as a byproduct. It's well, yes, it's uh, like a dog with a uh, pool gas, with a uh, combustible gas in, uh, in English. Please. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's say now
So definition the property P so uh, is is the variable property. So if it is robust, so P robust part robust property. If P is checking, uh, it's spelling uh, for these new words that I don't know. Uh, P. So if P is expelling itself, okay. So let's assume that you have this property. So we have seen it indeed already once again in the new house domain. So that is that something which can appear for smooth uh, dynamical system. It's not a C1 notion. So if you have your so you have your class and you have here your PF, you have a filtrating neighbor. And by arbitrarily small perturbation, so your PF is changing PG, but with still the property P because it is robust, but you create a new point Q, which is separated from the, uh, the previous one by a filtrating neighborhood. And this one, its class, satisfies P. So this both class now satisfies P. That's fine. I forgot to put something here. I will say G in O, and I will put G is equal to F out of uh, V. That is easier when we, we, we have this notion. <laughs> okay. So here, this property still have uh, the property P, but I can shrink the neighborhood to be to not contain this one, and I can have a new neighborhood here, and in each place here, I can do again the game. So I can have now a third point by making the perturbation inside here, I will create a new uh, point, Q1, separating from everybody, and here I will have a Q, Q let's say that is it was P, so let's uh, cause that P0. You want to start with P0, and let here with P1. So I will, I start with one point, and now I will have a second generation. So this one I will call it, uh, so let this one P10. I have a second being P11. But starting with one, I'm able to make two. So each, each of these, I can put two new points, which will be P11 and P12 and P... No, P... Yeah. Not good. P... It was zero. P1, P2. Okay. P, uh, I need two. What I put? Uh, so that was P, I put P0, P1. Uh, now I put P01, P0, uh, uh, P00, then I put P1, uh, two new points here, P10, P11, and so on. And each time I have each point separated from the other by filtrating neighborhoods. And each time I have the property P. And so like that I make uh, open set with uh, three of open set. Uh, we, I, I explain once uh, from the new house phenomena. And you go to, you look at every branches, and from every branches, you can make the intersection of these nested uh, sequences of filtrating neighborhood. 
And the limit each time is a chain recurrent class without periodic orbit. And here I'm building infinitely many branches. So I get uh, uncountably many infinite branches and I get uncountably many periodic classes. And in fact, up to now, that is the unique way I know every, every time someone built a periodic classes for some persisting, for, for something which persists by perturbation, it always has been done by this process. In fact, I, I have a, a paper which is called uh, Toward a Global View of a Dynamical System in the C1 Topology, and my conjecture is that each time you have uh, a periodic classes, you have uncountably many, and that is a unique uh, way for doing them. But I don't know that's a conjecture. Uh, so, uh, sorry, the conjecture is if you have robust. If you have uh, some generic diffeomorphism for, uh, I make the conjecture in the C1 topology, so C1 uh, generic diffeomorphism. And you assume that it has at least one aperiodic classes. So I assume that it, in fact it has uncountably many. And it has been done by, it's because it's come from a viral property of a chain recurrent class of periodic orbit. So that we have a lot of viral properties now. And I will try to explain one which uh, allow to obtain uh, a periodic classes with uh, several post uh, 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 different dynamics. So it's, it's, it's a, it has something to do with the notion of renormaliza uh, renormalizability, but it's not exactly the same. But okay, I finish what I want to say today. I imagine that creation of Adding machine and via consecutive periodic orbits of longer than Yes. Attracting to the limit. So for, for building adding machine is because what you create is a small periodic disk coming inside itself uh, and which has the same properties that allow to do the that. that so example. for the moment the adding machines that we have are uh, by these uh, viral properties, but uh, the property is to, uh, to allow to create some disk, some attracting disk somewhere. And then in the attracting disk, you have to be able to recreate the machinery which make you uh, continue. Thank you. Questions? Questions postponed until tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.